Folks, we all know I'm a fan of electric bikes, but what are they like in the real world? Let's ride one now and find out. So this is the chosen steed. This is the Energica Eva SS9. Now, if you've not seen the first ride review vid of this yet, head on up there. So, this thing, this, has a range of around about 50 to 60 miles. It's got 200 newton meters of torque, and it goes like the proverbial sticky stuff off a shovel. Ah, yeah. Now, I have found an app specifically for my purposes. It's called Kali Moto. Cheers, Pete, for putting me onto this. So with Kali Moto, you can uh, literally just set it up to do a random route. You choose how far you want it to be. You choose what sort of direction, whether you want to go north, south, east, west, or any variation of, around your current location or chosen location, and it will automatically generate a route for you. And um, bosh, that's what I've done. Set a route, I think it's around about 70, 75 miles. So I will definitely run out of charge. And uh, let's just deal with what do you do with an electric bike when you're out for a ride and you need to charge up. For my phone, for navigation, look at this. Massive thanks to Ultimate Add-ons for sending this through. They sent it about a year ago and I, I still have never got around to doing anything with it. I'm very sorry, Ultimate Add-ons. But it started to crop up in a few vids because I'm getting lots more bikes to use. Uh, some of them haven't got navigation or sat navs or anything like that so i'm starting to use my phone a lot more and this makes it really really easy you just whack it in there bosh close her up it's all secured it's all nice and watertight once it's in there and off we go and the clamp at the back there fits to absolutely any bike literally takes less than a minute to set it up and through the wonders of bluetooth it'll connect up to my cardo pack talk bold so i'll hear the navigation in my head along with all the other voices that I hear. So, let's crack on, make sure she's fully charged up. So we can see it's 100% charged, it's saying I've got roughly 52 miles, I reckon I should get about 60 odd. I've not ridden this bike out on the backcountry twisties as yet, so this is the first time out on proper decent backcountry roads, assuming this takes me to it. As you've seen in the first ride review, you've had to arm it, pull in the front brake, push, the ignition button, you wait for that go light to come on, and that is it. Off we go. Now, the power of this, the power of these electric bikes is phenomenal. It's brilliant. It's this instant boom of power. But this has inbuilt traction control on it as well, and it's got variable traction control. A lot of the early bikes didn't have that. In fact, I don't think the Zero had that. I think it does now on the SRF. I can't really remember. I'm going to get the SRF soon to take for a wee test. Now, from what I can remember of the DSR compared to this, the DSR has greater range. Uh, this has a little bit more power, to be honest, I think. It's got a bit more oomph there. But uh, you can only do 50, 60 miles on a charge on this, whereas with the DSR, you're looking at 80 to over 100 if you ride really sedately. Now, the second I have this set at the maximum regeneration possible, meaning uh, it's like the engine braking. So when you come off the throttle on this, so if I come off the throttle, well, it's like an air brake's coming up. Woo, you slow right down. It means you get the maximum regeneration possible into your battery. So every time you come off the throttle, you're starting like a you're starting to generate a little bit more power back into the battery off of that uh, kinetic. Is that the right word? Kinetic motion? Yeah, I don't know. Wizardry happens in the bike so that because you're not using the battery to power it, its forward momentum automatically starts to try and store some energy back into the battery. You're only talking tiny amounts. You'll have to bear with me if I go quiet approaching roundabouts and junctions because I have no idea which way this thing is going to take me. Yeah, so I think I was chatting about the DSR, wasn't I, versus this. Now, the Zero DSR that I rode last year, if you've not 
seen that review, check out the vid up there. Now that had a slightly better range, you're talking sort of 75-80 miles of your spanking the living daylights out of it through to sort of 100-120 maybe even if you're taking it very easy. There's all sorts of claims of 200 kilometres or 200 miles but I, I cannot see how you can get that. Maybe you can if you are particularly disciplined with the throttle and do less than stated speed limits and you never do any highways because highways, motor motorways, dual carriageways, they do destroy the batteries of electric bikes. You really want to keep away from them as much as possible. So for me commuting it's a 38 mile commute each way and the first half of that heading into town is all motorway and it just destroys the battery. Just zaps up all the power. With the Zero I can get in and out of work just on one charge. However on this, on the Energica EVA SS9, uh, I had to fill up with juice. While we're on that topic, recharging. Now this is the only electric bike as far as I'm aware at the moment that's commercially available which has both AC and DC charging options built into the bike. What that means is basically the AC is your traditional three pin plug, plug it into the uh, mains at home and it'll charge up overnight or say this will take three and a half to four hours to go from zero to 100% charge and with that you get sort of 60 miles. The zero you plug that in, the DSR last year was 10 to 12 hours for a zero to 100% charge. This year I believe you're down to sort of five to seven hours which is a massive improvement. However, when you use the fast charger on this here which is built in so you can use the DC fast charging booths like the Tesla ones you know the ones you see at service stations that you can plug in if you use the DC one on that this will give you a zero to 80% charge in 20 minutes or less that is phenomenal well we're going to try that today hopefully I should be able to find one there's a multitude of different apps that you can uh, use to try and find different charging stations right that'll do for now let's get out of these roads let's get out onto some open twisty roads <laughs> Now it does feel quite soft in the back to be honest, I, I'm sort of certainly coming out of bends, coming round bends and if you put the power on it feels like the back's going brrr, 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 like that, it feels quite wallowy. I wonder if I could turn that up a little bit, maybe that's what we will do, let's have a little look and see if we can adjust that, because that's going to spoil the ride. Right, let's have a look, let's turn this off. <sighs> Now, can we vary this? Ah, there we go, look. It's at the softest it possibly can be, see? I think with my weight. Let's put it on the hardest and see how that goes. We can always... Oh, we can always ease off a little bit. Keep reaching for the clutch all the time. Pull the front brake, tap the ignition, there's the go, and off we go. Ah, oh, that's much better. You feel that straight away. Beautiful. So, all through that first ride vid, I've had the rear shock set at the softest possible option. And I didn't notice. It's only once we come out and we start going through some bends, particularly around the roundabout, to be honest with you, that's when I noticed that. I love this. Look, we're in the Nationals and we're still sat at 40 miles an hour. Hey! Thanks, people. Now, if you have a look at the display, see there, see there's a little... If I put the power on, there's green. Now if I ease off, it goes blue. See that? Well, the blue is the regeneration. Oh, it's taking me down here. Kingswood, Olscombe. Now I have been down here. Oh look, some off-road for the kiddies. That looks great fun. Teach me how to do off-road, please, kids. So watch this. Look at that turn of speed. <laughs> that never gets old. It is so much fun. I mean, it, it just handles like a, a good bike. This has got the panniers on the back there. And I, I've got to say, the panniers are very, very clunky. It sounds like you're riding a, an iron bar with some metal strapped to the back of it. I think they're like 300 euros or more as an extra. I don't think I'd be paying that, to be honest. I'd get my own luggage. And you actually need the panniers. You need that space or a rucksack to carry around the charging cables. 
But I tell you, this has uh, Marconi front forks and they feel really good. You know, this is quite a bumpy back road this and I, I'm not feeling anything through the bars at all in a bad way. There's plenty of feel to tell you what the, the front wheel's doing, but it's not shaking my teeth out and it's certainly not walloping along. Set up really well. Still looking for the clutch. <laughs> no problem, sir. See, we're out in the countryside. People are nice. People are nice when you get people out the city. You get away from that hustle and bustle. People are inherently nice. There's one or two arseholes, but most people are nice. Don't forget that, folks. I have become such a hippie since my trip. And do you know what? I'm glad for it. It's nasty. Oh, that power is awesome. The pickup on this, 200 Newton meters of torque. Ooh -hoo -hoo. It is immense. There's nothing on the road's gonna beat this off the line. It's quite a nice route, this, this Kalimoto apps. This is not sponsored by Kalimoto whatsoever. My mate Pete put me onto the Kalimoto app ages ago and I've never actually looked at it to be perfectly honest with you. Because the GS has got the, the sat nav and stuff, I just go with that most of the time. But this is good. I, I like the way it just randomly plots a route for you. It's like you're getting lost, but with the security of a sat nav. Although it is taking me out into the sticks, so I wonder if there's actually going to be any charging stations. What we are, 85% we're at at the moment. This is such a nice ride, it's really good. Absolutely nothing wrong with this. I tell you what though, for an electric bike, this is actually quite loud. And I noticed that commuting, it's actually quite good because it draws people's attention. Unless they've got headphones and stuff on, which you do get in the towns. You know, folk just step out behind buses or in front of buses and cars and stuff. And they've got headphones on or they're looking straight into the phone. They're not concentrating on what's coming. And the benefit of the petrol bikes is that you have that, you know, that sort of thump, thump, the, the vibration of the engine at the very least. If you pull the clutch in and whap, give it a little blip as you're filtering through vehicles, which I do all the time. A lot of the time people can actually feel that through the floor believe it or not so that gets their attention this you're relying on that sound the zero hardly makes any noise especially at low speed whereas this this has really quite a profound high-pitched whine I'll tell you what the brakes are good yeah those brakes are good the brembo brakes on this they certainly haven't scrimped and saved on the equipment on the bike the spec is even as standard is pretty damn good but then it is 20 odd thousand euros for the base model but the base model is nothing to be sniffed at if you're in the uk check out the english electric motor company put a link down below check them out because they are an authorized reseller of these and they also do the zero bikes and a couple of others if you're elsewhere just get yourself onto the energica website again links down below and they'll be able to pinpoint you to your local authorized dealer Nationals, hoo -ha. Yeah, this is lovely out here, wow. I never knew these roads existed. Thank you very much, Kalimoto. I mean, it's great that this is a national, but there are loads of options left and right here in people's homes and stuff. How can you have a national speed limit on a road like this? And then the big open ones are like 40s and 50s. You don't get it. That's brilliant, you just don't need brakes. Roll off the power. Whoop, in you come. I tell you what folks, I am well impressed with this. It feels like a really spirited ride. I have no idea if it is, but it feels really spirited in the sense that it is really enjoyable. I like a more progressive ride. And I'm, you know, I'm not even at the speed limit in places here, but um, the ride is really enjoyable. I'm sort of forgetting I'm on an electric bike and just enjoying being out on two wheels. That instant delivery of power is addictive. You, you constantly want to be, you know, twisting the wrist, <laughs> which is obviously going to have an impact on your range. But 20 minute recharge time for 80%, as long as you can find that fast DC charger. There's not that many of them around, especially out in the sticks so um, we shall see 
I think when I'm at around probably 35-40% I will start looking. I'm at 78 at the moment. We've got 59 miles left of this journey. Would have been interested actually to have a petrol bike out with us, wouldn't it? And just see how this fares with the petrol bike. God, these little villages are beautiful. This is literally on my back doorstep. I'm only about 15 miles from the house. Never knew these places were here. It's such a weird sensation, sort of gliding almost through the countryside with no massive noise from the engine. You've got the scream off of this thing, but you haven't got that drone of the petrol engine. It's actually really nice. You really notice it when you come to a, a halt at junctions and stuff, especially if there's no other traffic around about you. It's just, wow, silence. And then you pull away and you get... <laughs> <laughs> this this is maximum points on the greenometer. See, this is quite bumpy and it's not bad at all. The front feels stable. The back, I would probably want to upgrade the shock, to be honest. But then it is really quite bumpy road. This I'm I'm a good 130 kilograms, I would say, not far from it. And the bike is 260 odd. So you know, there's nearly half a ton bouncing around on this <laughs> on this bike. I suppose it's not doing too bad at all, considering. Where am I? Pluckley Smarden. Into the Nationals. What a great feeling, sitting at national speeds along country twisty roads on this thing. It's great fun. It is great fun. It's really good. See, having the um, regeneration set to its maximum, you hardly need to touch the brakes when you're actually out riding. Because you can just roll off the throttle and it's like riding a great big V-twin or something. It's just bub, 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 bub. <laughs> The power delivery to overtake is phenomenal. It is a very warm, sticky day today. It's 20-odd uh, degrees, 22, 24 degrees, something like that. But again, you get no heat off the engine, so it's lovely. It's really nice. The air just cools you down as you're moving. When you stop, you're not cooking on the bike. I've got no complaints, none, about this so far. Absolutely none. Oh, hang on. Right, you're gonna have to change batteries on the GoPro, believe it or not. The GoPro's gone before this is gone. That's a fresh battery. God, how long have I been out? I've only used 28% of the bike battery, but the GoPro's nearly done. Ugh, I wish they would sort the battery life out. I love the GoPros, except the battery life and its reliability. The picture, Stabilisation, the audio, everything is fantastic on these, but they have a habit of not working when you really want them to, or just running out of power. Right, I will have to stop and change the battery on a GoPro. It's quite funny that, isn't it? Everyone always goes on about the battery capacity of the new electric bikes, and about how it's inhibiting their range. The good old GoPro, the battery goes first on that, and the battery on my phone, that's nearly gone. And yet I've still got... About 50% left in the bike. And yet we put up with that, don't we? We work around it. Maybe that's what we're gonna have to do with um, electric. Who knows? Certainly makes you think about every journey that you're doing and you plan it, make the most of it. As I said, I'm becoming a hippie. Let's get back to the road. <clears throat> I'm seeing lots of this. Seem to be able to sneak up on wildlife. <laughs> it's pedestrians in the city, wildlife when you're out in the sticks. And some more. This is gorgeous out here. I never knew this even existed down in Kent. Wow. Absolutely no idea where I am. But, wow. Right, what are we at now? We're actually at 63%. And this is saying I still have 49 miles left in the range, which is weird because I've done about 30 odd miles already. So it just shows you that when you're on the backcountry roads, and I've been up at national speed limits in places, uh, but I think because you're constantly on and off the throttle and up and down through the different speeds, so you're getting quite a lot of regeneration there. And once you're at a speed, you ease off the throttle and the momentum of the bike just keeps you going because it's a heavy. It's actually a lot more economical with the battery than perhaps I first thought. Certainly on motorways and stuff, it just rinses it. You can watch the charge disappear. But on sort of normal roads, it's been a joy so far. I mean, I've been out for like an hour and a half. Okay, into the Nationals.
Oh, this route is a, a real variety of, of back roads like this. Whoop. And sort of fast B and A roads. It's really good actually, I'm enjoying it. What a great little function, I've not seen that. Not as comprehensive as this, not as easy as this on any other app. I've got the Best Biking Roads app, which doesn't really let you pick a route and just navigate via the app. You have to save the GPX file and import that into whatever navigator you're using. The Reaver app, yeah that will, but again you have to open up a saved route in the Reaver app and it will direct you. But this actually does it all in-house in the app. Now I got this ages ago and I can't remember if I paid for it or not, I really can't. But if you have to pay for it, I'll put it up on the screen now. Oh, left. But I tell you what, it is well worth it. This is fabulous. Fabulous, look at me. Thank you very much, Oka 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 Do. Oh, I'd love to live out here. Some of these houses, folks, are just amazing. And then you get like traditional big farmhouses out here, the host houses. It's just beautiful. How am I doing for power? Because I don't imagine there's any recharge places out here. I'm at 55% still. Wow. It's 55% and I'm over halfway. That's really good. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to stop anyway at some point, whether I need to or not, just to charge this up. Nationals. Oh, yeah, you're not kidding, it's bumpy. Oh, blimey. Oh, just smash my credentials against the tank. This is an absolute joy, folks. It really is. You know, not only just being on this bike, but just hitting the road and not knowing where you're going. You know, just, just let the sat-nav randomly take you somewhere. I love it, it's great fun. Into the Nationals. I'll have to do it on Helga. That pickup, that is never, ever going to get old. Do you know, I've ridden plenty of petrol motorbikes that don't ride as well as this does. I mean, it's 20 grand, that's a lot of money, but then you haven't got servicing. You're not having to pay for fuel, there's no road tax. I wonder what the insurance is. But yeah, there are absolutely no complaints. I'm loving this. There are different power modes in this, but I don't really see much point in trying them. If you're running out of charge, then yeah, you whack it on economy and it will slow down the performance, but give you a little bit more range. So I can see the point in that, but then I never really see the point in them in the first place on petrol bikes either. Yeah, it's quite wallopy, you can feel it going round the bend, especially if you ease off the throttle as you're going round the bend, you can feel the bike being quite unsettled. But it's not going to buck you off or anything like that. It's just quite a contrast because the bike is inherently very stable and very planted as you're moving. So you do notice if it sort of doesn't like what you're doing. Oh, shiver, I'm supposed to do a right there. Yui! What's the turn circle? Actually, the turn circle's not bad, I just screwed that up. But it was pretty good. Oh man, I'm loving this! What a fantastic machine to ride! Just effortless! Seriously, I am loving that. What an awesome sensation! You almost feel like you're flying! Oh, you gotta take one of these out, you really do. Where am I going? Left. Get yourself onto English Electric Motor Company or the Energica website, find your nearest one and hit the road. It is awesome. Left, left. Sissinghurst Tenterden. Right, what am I down to? Down to 43%. I've got 26 miles left of this trip. So I think what I'll do is I will pull over somewhere and let's use the apps and find a charging station and I'll show you how you charge this up. Shall we do that? Shall we? Right, let us have a little look. Okay, so... Now, charge point, that's the app that I'm using to try and find a charging point. So let's have a look here. So where I am... That is showing. There's two there. So that's AC, no, that's slow. Is there any DC anywhere? What's that? Ah, green, that means they're available. DC, 4.1 miles away, I'm in the middle of nowhere, and 4.1 miles away there is a DC fast charger available. So let's, I'm assuming I can use the app, Google Maps, 
That is mega. It plots a route for you. Head west on Cranbrook Road, A262 awesome. towards B2084. Bosh. Beautiful. It's as easy as that, folks. I mean, I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. And yet, there are still <laughs> the low power mode. My phone battery is now low. Oops. We need to get there soon. Not because the uh, bike's going to run out, but because the phone might. Wasn't expecting that. This is weird, this. Look, I'm following an electric Mercedes in front. Apart from the wind noise, it's totally silent. Isn't that weird? I am in the middle of nowhere. The middle of nowhere. There cannot be a charge point out here. And all of a sudden I'm in a village. But I mean, why would this have a charge point? Awesome if it does. What's saying in here? Just got a charge point. Oh, you dancer. I wonder if I can. Oh, you beauty. Charge point. Ta da! <laughs> right, I have never, ever, ever used these things before, so let's see how we do. Right, how do I do it? 5p per kilowatt. Double click for Apple Play. Is it as easy as that? Walk them in here. Take that one off as well. Plug it in. DC fast charging initial initialization. Wow. We're charging. We're charging. Estimated time left at 80%. 21 minutes. Bosh. Beautiful. Okay. All right, let's see how much this costs. Well, time to charge everything else up as well. I recharge myself as well, eh? 99% charge. And then it says all I do, tap card to end. So, it's one done. Take her out. £2.66 to charge her up. £2.66 for a full tank. Come on people, where's your argument now? Middle of nowhere. It's taken 20 minutes to charge the bike to 99%. Actually it's about 24 minutes. I've had a sandwich, a drink, a chalky bar and a chat with the guy that runs this place. And uh, it's not a bad word to say about this. Right, we are done. So, the perverse thing about this, folks, is my phone has been on charge the entire time. What am I at? 18%. So it's gone from 7 to 18% in the time it's taken the bike battery to go from, was it 41, 42 to uh, 99%. So, believe it or not, the Energica comes with not one, but two USB ports. So I've plugged the phone charger in. And with the ultimate add-ons, a phone holder, I can plug her in, and now it charges off of the bike, and we can resume our ride. That is amazing. Where am I? I'm in Marden. I'm all the way out here, and they've got DC fast charging points. Wow. I don't even know if there's DC fast charging points in Maidstone. I've got no idea. But I tell you what. Pfft. What argument have you got? Apart from, yeah, okay, it's going to slow up your progress a little bit. Definitely. So every 60, 70 miles, you're going to have to stop for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give you that. It's it's not as practical in any shape or form as petrol. You can't, you just can't say it is for electric motorbikes at the moment. No. Zero, on the other hand, zero, they'll do 80 to 100 miles, but it's a lot longer to charge. You're looking at, I think it's 40 minutes for something like 60 or 70% charge or an hour for 60 or 70% charge. This is definitely much quicker. But I tell you what, folks, considering where we were even one year ago, the leaps and bounds in that one year, this time next year, we could have a perfectly feasible, fully, fr 
huh, easy for you to say, fully fledged and practical electric motorbike. You've got nothing to worry about. As far as the ride goes, awesome. Oh, and look, can this day get any better? Nationals! Whoop. Yeah! <laughs> Seriously folks, this is such fun. Oh, we just come into a 40. Slew. Interestingly, I've been thinking about the charging there. Now that was what, £2.30, £2.40, let's just grab a figure. £2.50 say to charge that up. And with that I'll get Oh, well, I'd done, I'd actually ridden uh, over 50 miles there, I'd done 51 miles. So let's say £2.50 for 50 miles. So what do you get with your average tank of fuel? Well, I am now about 25 quid to fill up Helga, the BMW, and I'll get, say, 180 miles. There's a bit left in there. So let's say 200 miles to a tank for 25 quid. So... That's 5 times 50, 5 times £2.50 is £12.50. So it is half the price. It's not as good as I thought, actually, but it's still half the price of petrol. And it used to be free right up until this year, more or less. And then uh, a lot of these charging point companies, they've started to charge. And I think that will be the case across the uh, charging points, especially once the likes of BP, Shell, all the big major fuel operators, once they embrace electric or whatever the alternative energy will be, of course they're going to start with it being free or very much discounted, but don't you worry about it, they will soon bump the prices up because they're always going to make money and that's not just the sceptic in me, that is sheer business logic. So at the moment, yes, it is half price. But it used to be free, so it's already gone up. However, we're going to have to go the way of electric or hydrogen or alternative energy anyway. And if this is anything to go by, there is nothing to worry about. So folks, what do I think? Well, I think you've probably figured it out already. I love this thing. I absolutely love it. I wouldn't have it as my main bike yet. The infrastructure is just not there and I think there's leaps and bounds to come in the technology with regards to uh, the range that's going to be available from the batteries. And I think with this DC charging technology, 20 minutes to get your, your battery almost back to 100%. That's phenomenal. Imagine what's going to come in the future. So um, do not dismiss electric. Do not dismiss it. Get out there. Get yourself along to English Electric Motor Company. Check out their link down below. Or alternatively, if you're after the Energica, get on the Energica website. Again, links down below. Look for your local dealership or distributor and take one for a test. They are phenomenal. This as it is just now this is sort of mid-range one i think this is about twenty-three thousand euros so it's what 19 20 000 pounds uh, it starts at around twenty thousand euros so i think that's about 16 and a half 17 000 pounds at the moment uh, you can spec them right up uh, full all in smarty semi wheels everything um Get yourself on there and have a little play and uh, see what you can come up with. I think it will go up to around about 26, 27,000 euros for the top spec one. But think about the savings you're going to make on servicing, because there is no servicing. It's an annual check that's like 40, 50 quid. Well, just uh, don't dismiss it. Get yourself out there and do some investigation yourself. Take one for a ride and see what you think. All right, folks, this will do us for just now. Hope you've enjoyed the vid. 
All you new subscribers, thank you very much for popping along. Please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell. For all you current subscribers, thanks for sticking with me. I hope you're enjoying it. And for all you clans people, you're a special breed. Thank you. If you're not part of the clan and you'd like to join us, head to patreon.com forward slash teapot one and uh, come along. All right, folks, that'll do us for just now. Keep on keeping on. Get yourself on out there. Keep doing your thing. But most importantly, live your life.